I'm Tim Herrera with the Sacramento County Office of Education here with another Teacher of the Year profile. Right now we're joined by Kendall Murphy who is the Teacher of the Year for the River Delta Unified School District and you are a first grade teacher at Walnut Grove Elementary. I am. All right, well congratulations to you. Thank you. So let's talk about first grade. Um, it's kind of one of those building block grades where you know students are if you have a half day kindergarten they come in all of a sudden they're in full day but uh, tell me about some of the challenges that you deal with with the first grade students when you've got that plus just kind of knowing that you're really laying the foundation for the next grade and the grades to come. I think that first grade is an extremely important grade and I feel honored to be able to teach first grade because I do know it's such a building block. Uh, I think one of the most difficult challenges um, at our school is the um, we have a, a large second language population. We have a wonderful staff, we have a wonderful parent volunteers, wonderful parent involvement, but it's you know getting those foundational skills uh, in English and I am not myself bilingual, so I am learning Spanish as I go along for my mm -hmm. students. They're very um, good about that. It's it's really important to make sure that the students and the parents understand how important reading is and those foundational skills. Um, I believe that reading is the skill that takes you through a lifetime. And so uh, it's extremely important and we spend a lot of emphasis on it. So I was just going to ask, is that really the main subject that you, tr I mean you focus on all the subjects, but you integrate that as much as you can in all your other subjects? Well, your success in reading is dependent on at your success in other classes and other subjects is really I feel dependent upon your reading ability and if you can be a critical thinker if you can be a problem solver if you can delve into text and you can make inferences from that text um, then that transfers to science and language arts, social studies any other subject reading is the key it is the foundation mathematics you know there's a lot of reading in mathematics and it just, it, it sets you off for a wonderful tone in your life. How big of an adjustment is first grade for the little ones? You know, I have a wonderful kindergarten teacher. Uh, we are a very small school. We have one gr uh, classroom per grade level and we work really well together. We, um, we collaborate quite a bit and so she knows what I want. I know what she teaches. I feel very confident with my students coming in and having the basics that I need to have for first grade and so um, I think it makes it a lot easier on me. And You're also kind of dealing with students who are um, even though they may have gone to kindergarten mm -hmm. which is not required mm -hmm. but uh, you may have, they may have gone to kindergarten you're still kind of starting over again with the separation from you know mom and dad and, Absolutely. and so you've got all the emotional stuff. Um, that's got to be a challenge at times. Absolutely. The, when students come into first grade, there's a huge wide range of abilities. And you have to treat every child as an individual. There might be some people that are still working on their, um, their, their um, phoneme awareness. There might be readers in your classroom. So that's what makes first grade exciting, I believe, is that there is such a wide range. And when we're, we're cooperatively, you know, a struggling student can help a student, I mean, a, a very competent student can help a struggling student. And I guess because I'm used to it, it just, it's, it's just natural to, for me to have such a wide range of abilities. You had mentioned that you have uh, a, a large population, a sizable population of students who are learning English. Mm -hmm. what are, lay out some of the challenges that you face uh, with that. I think probably the hardest challenge is to communicate with the parents um, in terms of because we have a large Spanish speaking population and so I come from a school that I was able to communicate um, very freely so we have a translator mm -hmm. and oftentimes when you go through a translator you don't get your feeling and the nuances of what you want across. Um, but we have such a wonderful staff and really supportive parents that that hurdle, as I'm, I've taught at Walnut Grove now for a couple of years, and they're beginning to trust me and they know my standards and they know what I want. And so the parents are, are behind me. So if, if there are language issues in communicating with the families, 
Does that impact um, the level of family involvement you have? No, actually, I just I, no. Interesting. It it's, it, no, our families are there for our kids. Education is extremely important in our um, community, and they understand. And we have parents that you know don't speak English very well, but they're still there helping out. They're doing um, things for the classroom teacher. They're helping out at lunchtime. They're teaching the kids soccer at recess time. It's a very involved school. Um, they do what they can do, and they support us 100 percent. That's good to know that, that, that the parents still want to be involved, even though Absolutely. they might have some hesitation themselves because of language barriers. Absolutely. And I think because our school is so welcoming, my principal makes it a very welcoming um, community. Um, I think we have more parent involvement, and they feel very, very comfortable doing it. And it's just it's, it's, it creates this large learning family. Now, in, in one of your essays, you wrote, the partnership of learning is the biggest reward in teaching. Expound on that a little bit more. What do you mean by that? Well, I believe that when you are a teacher, oftentimes, um, when I first started teaching 20 years ago, it was the sage on the stage, and the teacher was the fount of knowledge, mm -hmm. and everyone just kind of soaked it up. And I love the shift in education where it has become a partnership, where the kids have much more of an investment in their education. They're talking, they're collaborating. They are kind of the, the push to, I give them the information and I see where they can run with it. And that to me is a partnership and we, we just, um, we feed off of each other and we support each other and I love that partnership, I love that the kids have much more of a, um, a say in their own education, and we get to talk a lot more and discuss a lot more. That's exciting to me. And I also understand that in your district you serve as a mentor teacher? I have served as a mentor teacher. So what is that like, and why do you think it's important for the experienced teachers to do that? Well, um, the biggest thing is that you, at least for myself, I started to really um, start to think about my own teaching. Mm -hmm. You know, when I see a, my student teacher taking over the class, I ask myself, could I have taught that better? You know, teaching an adult is much different than teaching a first grader. But it's a lot of self-reflection. Oftentimes, I would, at the end of the day, after we had our reflection with my, um, my student teacher, I reflected upon my own teaching. And I said, do I need to change things? And she brought in new ideas that she had taught, you know, she had just gotten out of the credential program. And so I think it was valuable for me um, not only to have another uh, student in my class, a bit of an older student, but um, to gain a lot more appreciation for what I do and what I need to do. So you gain knowledge as well. Absolutely. I learned from her. She learned from me. Our, my students learned um, from both of us, and it was a wonderful experience all around. So you mentioned that you've been teaching for about 20 years. I have. What are some of the big changes in education you've seen from your perspective? Uh, well, when I first started, it was all whole language. Mm. Phonics. Oh, we don't need phonics. All whole language. And uh, I struggled with that. I started teaching in a fifth grade classroom, and I realized that even though they said that whole language was the, you know, it's the new thing, phonics, may, really, phonics was the underpinning of all of reading. And so we went away from that, and then it kind of shifted to phonics. And now I believe with the Common Core, uh, I've drank the Kool-Aid, I love Common Core. I believe that it allows the students to become even better than they were. It's not just a fill in the blank, it's not a, a bubble. It's, well, is that what you think? Well, how did you get to that? Do you, have you thought about it this way? Mm -hmm. So it's more of a investigative learning and I just, I absolutely love it. And so when, you know, when you're dealing, again, getting back to being a mentor teacher mm -hmm. and you're, you're dealing with the, uh, uh, the adult coming out of college, uh, you, you must say to yourself, okay, uh, I'm to the point now where I've been here a long time and I don't want to get set in my ways. And this is a chance for you to, to not get set in your ways. Absolutely. Um, I embrace technology. I have a smart board. I love my smart board. 
Um, the new teachers that are coming out of college right now, they're what I call smartified. They're fully technologically immersed. And I believe if you don't, if you're not with the current um, things that kids are using, tablets and computers and things like that, then we don't help them. We're not a benefit to them as much as we could be. You know, we, if they communicate through these devices, then don't we as teachers need to learn how to communicate through those devices too and have that common um, knowledge, that common language with each other so that we can understand what platform. You know, it's not the movie projector um, DVD, mm -hmm. not even the CD. It's now, you know, it's the web and it's the tablet and it's the instant messaging. And I think it's really important that teachers understand that even though you are an older teacher or a mature teacher, you still need to be current and keep up with the times. Well, thank you very much for being with us. We thank appreciate you. your time. We're speaking with Kendall Murphy, who is the Teacher of the Year for 2017 for the River Delta Unified School District. Thanks for thank joining you. us. Thank you very much. I appreciate it.